When I strength tested these joints, I got a lot of failures on the glue line, and I'm starting to wonder, is my glue as good as I think it is? So time for some glue tests. This is the glue I was using, and I've got uh, 10 other glues here to test against it. And for all of these, I made several samples where I glued one of these pieces onto this piece, and these all came from the same piece of 2x4, so they should be consistent. And I'll be testing them with the screw jack, which is on top of some load cells to measure the force. The test samples are clamped to this post, and this jack will push on here until it breaks. First up, construction adhesive. That's John Heist's favorite. So this shows the current force in kilograms, and this kind of graphs it with just a character graph. And it's done. Broke at 58 kilograms. Next up, Aero Hot Glue. So there's certainly some yielding happening here, but it's still holding at 85 kilograms. 86, 87? This joint is yielding. The hot glue is a bit more flexible. And it decided that it yielded enough and just kind of decided to back off of that. Hot glue is stronger than construction adhesive. Who would have thought? But I've got three more samples of each to go. I was very careful making my hot glue joints, heating both surfaces hot enough that the glue was liquid against both of them. I just gotta finish that break so I can get the next sample. I'm raising the jack to get the next two samples. LePage Carpenter's glue from a brand new bottle. I guess that one didn't beat the hot glue either. This brand of epoxy from Home Hardware. This is the first one so far to really tear a chunk out of the wood. Gorilla glue, the kind that really foams up. Well, I think that was the strongest one so far. Oh yeah, broke some of the wood too. Weld bond. Tight bond three. So I was definitely seeing some wood failure there. This, uh, this piece here split. This one is using my big jug of LePage, which is the same as this, but I'm not sure if this has gotten too old or something. This was weaker than the glue from the new bottle, but only by five kilograms, and it's only the first of four samples. Super glue from the dollar store. Gorilla wood glue. That's a pretty good showing, and actually part of the wood failed here too. Elmer's school glue. So the only one weaker than that so far was construction adhesive. Five minute epoxy from the dollar store. Well, that's the winner so far. So that was one of each so far. The rest of these are repeats of the same kinds of glue. This sort of gradual yielding failure was very typical with a hot glue, though some hot glues performed much better than others. And here's my results. Bars in red are where the wood mostly failed. Highest failure strength was the 5 minute epoxy followed by weld bond, super glue, tight bond 3, uh, via bond epoxy, that's a slow setting one, uh, an old bottle of LePage, the Arrow brand hot glue, although only two samples, a fresh LePage bottle, Gorilla glue, Gorilla wood glue, school glue, heavy duty hot glue, supposedly heavy duty, Construction adhesive was the second weakest, and the weakest was some random hot glue I had in my glue gun. 
So interestingly enough, the fresh bottle of LePage Carpenter's Glue was a little bit weaker on average than the old stuff, so I think that's just random variations. And with quite a few wood failures here, the ones in red are really mostly wood failures, I really need to retest the stronger glues with hardwood. The weaker glues, construction adhesive, the random hot glue and the glue gun, and the school glue all failed without tearing much out of the wood. Whereas a lot of the other ones, um, you see here for instance, there's more wood failure than glue failures, or here. But it's all quite random, so I've remade all of these with hardwood, but I've eliminated the weaker glues like construction adhesive and the crummy hot glue. First hardwood test, super glue. That's a lot more than I was getting before. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I didn't clamp that hard enough. Super glue, take two. Once the force exceeds a certain level, I slow down the stepper motor so it doesn't skip steps. And the wood broke. Well, actually the glue joint failed, but so did the wood. Weld bond. The slow epoxy. Gorilla wood glue. Tight bond three. And here's my results with the maple. The breaking forces were substantially higher than what I had with the softwood. This is on the same scale. Even the glues where mostly the glue failed seemed to do better with the hardwood. And this is using the same geometry as I had used for the softwood. And the softwood surface was actually pretty rough and fresh cut. But perhaps the softwood just doesn't stick as well to the glue as the maple does. The percentage variability was also a lot less. Uh, if we go back to these scale to full graph, you can see these jump around a lot more than what I got with the maple. So I trust these results more. This is uh, softwood and hardwood tests. And you can see all these, a lot of these nearly doubled. And the best one with the hardwoods was a super glue followed by Gorilla Wood Glue, Weld Bond, Tight Bond 3, 5 Minute Epoxy, Gorilla Glue, LePage and Aerobrand hot glue. So which glue is best? Well, it depends. The super glue did best in my tests, but it's not suitable for large glue ups and just too much of a hassle to deal with. Same with epoxy and the Gorilla Glue, the type that foams up, though it did okay, it's just not suitable for any sort of joinery where you might have a gap because it foams up and basically squeezes out most of the glue, which makes for a very weak joint. Of the woodworking glues with the maple, Gorilla Glue did best, followed by Weld Bond, followed by Tight Bond. This didn't do as well, although with the softwoods, this was still the weakest one, but not by much. In terms of going bad, I think Weld Bond is the worst. Uh, in fact, the first bottle I bought from the hardware store had already gone bad, and I had to go back for another one. Tight Bond 3 goes bad, not as fast, and I think... Gorilla Glue goes bad a little bit slower than the Tight Bond 3, but I'm not quite sure. And of course this doesn't go bad at all. And it also may depend on what you're gluing, because even the glues that didn't tear a chunk out of the softwood did better with the hardwood than they did with the softwood. So I think that softwood was just maybe a little bit more oily than the maple I was using, and so the glue didn't stick to it as well. As for construction adhesive, it's really not a woodworking glue. But I may not have given this enough time to dry. Uh, I gave it 48 hours, which might not have been enough. But it is suitable for low temperatures. So are these glues, but of course these are kind of a pain in the ass to deal with. These ones all have low temperature limits, although this one seems to be the most tolerant based on the labels. Not that I've tested it. All of these require at least 13 degrees or whatever that is in Fahrenheit. My surprise here is that the Gorilla Wood Glue outdid the Tight Bond 3 
and this stuff is cheaper and I think it goes bad slower so I kind of have to endorse it a little bit even though I really hate uh, this Gorilla Glue. I only bought a tiny bottle because I knew the rest would go bad on me. And two more tests. So this is construction adhesive on here but this time I wetted the joint and I dried it for just one day on the radiator to see if this is going to glue better. And then this is Gorilla Wood Glue and uh, it's doesn't look the best anymore. It's gotten kind of chunky, but uh, I glued uh, these two joints with it to see if this uh, gone bad glue still glues good. Construction adhesive. At 46 and 48 kilograms, uh, that's uh, very weak. Uh, perhaps the uh, water didn't help any, because water is supposed to speed up how this cures, or maybe the heat damaged it. I don't know. Clumpy old Gorilla wood glue. Oh, the wood is split along here, so that's not really fair anymore. So I've got splits all along this wood, which allows it to bend much better, but the glue is still holding on. So this isn't really a glue failure. Second clumpy Gorilla wood glue. At 210, this is actually above average for my Gorilla wood glue samples. So uh, that's really impressive for uh, Gorilla Wood Glue that's gone all chunky on me. So the lesson is if you can still get it out of the bottle, it'll still glue good. I should also point to some tests done by Wood by Wright. He tested over 60 glues under different circumstances, overall testing over a thousand wood samples. Unfortunately, his tests don't include a sort of a long grain to long grain at a right angle test because to me that's the most relevant because most wood joinery comes down to long grain to long grain at a right angle. I've got his online Google Docs spreadsheet of all of his results and he's had some overlaps with the tests that I've done. Um, so some of the glues that I tested, he tested as well. And so I scaled his results because it's a completely different type of test he's done. And uh, some of those kind of agree. He also had surprisingly good results for super glue or CA glue. And uh, these ones, pretty close. Uh, he didn't test hot glue, not surprisingly. And unfortunately, no Gorilla Wood Glue, because I was curious about that one. So going forward, if I'm using hardwood, then strength really matters. I'll probably start using this more. But for most other things, and for softwoods, I'll probably continue to use this stuff, because it doesn't go bad, it's cheap, and it doesn't ruin my clothes if I get them on there. The Weld Bond did beat it by about 15% or so, but I just don't like using that stuff very much, so this it is.